Despite the premise of the Pokemon video games focusing on things like catching and collecting as many Pokemon as possible, it seems like on the television series, Ash seems to sometimes do the opposite, with a large number of the Pokemon that he obtained or caught over the years were released by Ash for one reason or another. So we wanted to take a look back at every single time Ash took one of his Pokemon that he had on his team and decided, hey, you're free to go. Go live your best life, or something like that. Seriously, it's always been an interesting way that the show has approached this. I mean, sure, in some cases it leads to some really great storytelling, but sometimes it just leaves fans maybe scratching their heads wondering why. Okay, one of the earliest and maybe the most heartbreaking release that Ash had done was the day he decided that the first Pokemon he ever caught wasn't too integral to the Pokemon team. And no, we're not talking about Bye Bye Butterfree just yet. Matter of fact, Ash chose to trade away his Butterfree to another trainer while he was on the Saint Anne for another trainer's Raticate, who he briefly battled against. But it seemed like right after the trade, Ash was feeling remorseful. He had spent so much time with Butterfree. It was the first Pokemon he ever caught, and it evolved a couple episodes later. It was a part of his three Pokemon team before he got the starters and they all joined up on his team. So despite things like the boat literally sinking, Ash decided to find that trainer and trade back to reobtain his Butterfree just because of how important that Pokemon was, but it was the first time Ash technically changed up his lineup by essentially giving away a Pokemon, or in this case, trading away. But of course, Ash learned his lesson. He knew Butterfree was too important to give up, and he kept the Pokemon for five whole episodes before finally releasing it in Bye Bye Butterfree. Now, we're not gonna lie, Bye Bye Butterfree is probably one of the most heartbreaking episodes, especially if you watched this when you were a kid or when you were younger, but at least this time, Butterfree leaving has a bit more of a justified reason, even if it's unlike literally anything from the video games. As it turns out, it's mating season for Butterfree, and Ash's Butterfree goes and falls in love with some pink Butterfree, who's not too interested in him at the beginning of the episode, though after defeating Team Rocket by the end of the episode, they're best buds, and Butterfree leaves to go start a family, and we never hear from Butterfree again, and it's actually kind of sad, but it did open up a team for Ash's adventures for some other plot lines when Ash occasionally would have have a different Pokemon in rotation in that sixth Pokemon spot. For instance, in one episode, Ash actually manages to chase down a Mankey, who then evolves into a Primeape. Despite this Primeape going completely berserk on all of them, Ash does overcome his weaknesses and manages to catch this powerful Pokemon. And though Primeape never really listened to Ash too often, much like his Charizard, Ash eventually does earn the respect of his Primeape, though Ash chooses to leave his Primeape behind with another trainer who may be better at making that Pokemon a better version of itself. So Ash kind of just left him behind here. Also along the way, after Ash was brutally beaten by Sabrina, the psychic gym leader, he goes on to a haunted tower in Lavender Town to catch a ghost type Pokemon. Eventually the Pokemon Haunter decides to join him after kind of low-key killing Ash and turning him into a ghost for a little bit. It was a little weird. Nonetheless, Haunter is able to make Sabrina laugh for the first time, making her not as evil, I guess, as she was in the first episode you see her in. And I guess because of that, Ash gets the gym badge, but also he chooses to leave Haunter behind because it obviously was a Pokemon that somehow made Sabrina a better person. Though as Ash journeys on through the rest of the Kanto League, he does manage to continue his adventures without having to release too many of his Pokemon. Matter of fact, after the Indigo League, he moves on to the Orange Islands and keeps most of his Pokemon throughout that. Oh, also in the Orange Island saga, I guess Ash technically did have a Lapras. He mostly used it as an ocean Uber service to get from one island to the other, and after he was done with most of his Orange Islands adventure, the Lapras did go off to go be with its family. Though, he does have his Pidgeotto evolve into a Pidgeot, who then in Viridian Forest goes and helps all the other Pidgeys and Pidgeottos that are out there, because the Spearow and Fearow are doing a thing, and for whatever reason, Ash decides he needs to leave his Pidgeot behind so that his Pidgeot could protect all of the Pidgeys of the forest from being terrorized by those Spearow and Fearow, and of course, Ash promised that once he got the whole GS ball debacle under control, he would come back for Pidgeot which he never did. So who knows, maybe one day Ash will come back for his Pidgeot that's just waiting out there in Viridian Forest. 
During the Johto Journeys adventure, Ash did need to make some room to get some new Pokemon on his team. So unfortunately, Ash chose to make some pretty major cuts to his team to make room. Not really, but they did write off each main Pokemon Ash did have on his team in one way or another. His Squirtle went on to join up with the Squirtle squad, which ended up being a firefighting team of Squirtles. So I guess Ash's Squirtle needed to be there to lead them to put out fires. So Ash did say goodbye to his Squirtle, who did rejoin later on in the league to help Ash in a battle. But for the most part, that's what Squirtle's been up to all of these years. Ash's Charizard eventually started to obey him finally after all of that time, and despite Ash's Charizard being an absolute powerhouse, when at the Charific Valley, it turned out the other Charizards were just much stronger Charizards than him, so Ash chose to leave his Charizard behind so his Charizard could train and become stronger, and for the most part, that's where Charizard was. He did reappear a couple of times, like in the third Pokemon movie, and way later on in the Black and White series, Charizard rejoined joined his team for a while, which was really cool, but now Charizard is just chilling with the rest of the Pokemon that Ash leaves behind every time he goes on a new adventure at Professor Oak's lab. During the bug catching competition in Goldenrod City, Ash actually manages to catch a pretty cool Beedrill, who he immediately gives it away to his friend Casey in the episode, a pretty short-lived member of the team. Later on in Johto, Ash carries around a Pokemon egg, which was a big mystery for a while. We didn't know what would hatch out of it, and as it turned out, he ended up getting a Larvitar, which joined Ash's team briefly. Briefly, and as cool as it would have been for Ash to have a Tyranitar, could you imagine how awesome that would be? Instead, he eventually finds the Larvitar's mother, and Larvitar returns to his mother there. So then, after the Johto journeys, one big thing that was changed in the storytelling in Pokemon was the fact that, in general, they decided just to have Ash leave his Pokemon behind with Professor Oak, rather than cycling them out throughout the next season like they did with Johto. So going into Hoenn, Ash went on for a fresh, brand new start with just Pikachu, meaning that the rest of his team of Pokemon that he had with him through Johto were now with Professor Oak, and Ash would have room to catch all new Pokemon, which, for the most part, did delay Ash from releasing some Pokemon for some time. Matter of fact, Ash keeps all of his Pokemon through Hoenn and brings along his Apom that joined him at the end of his Battle Frontier saga before going full on to Sinnoh with the Diamond and Pearl series. And eventually, later on, Ash decides to trade his Apom to his fellow traveler Dawn, who has a Buizel, because they both felt like each other's Pokemon would be better fits in either the contest form of training versus the more battling aspect. So Ash actually does a trade that isn't a complete disaster, and Apom even evolves into Ambipom and stays a member of Dawn's team. You can definitely tell at this point in the anime, they did start reconsidering how Ash kind of had managed to release so many of his Pokemon, and it really became less and less common of a thing throughout the later seasons of the television show. There wasn't anything too major until X and Y when Ash released his Gudra, leaving it behind in the wetlands so that it could live with its other Gudra friends. And then one of the more outrageous ones definitely was when Ash released his Greninja, and of course he releases his Greninja so that it can detect and destroy the reappearing roots, which was caused by the whole Team Flare thing that happened. Later on in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Ash releases his Poipole, where it then chooses to stay in its homeworld until it eventually evolves into Naganoddle, who reappears later on in the show and helps Ash out in a battle, and then of course returns to its homeworld back in Ultra Space. Also, this one might not actually fully count, but Ash did have a Rotom, which was like that living Pokedex thing that was just chilling around with Ash and was really in his care, even though it wasn't necessarily captured by Ash. Though at the end of the whole Sun and Moon arc, Ash's Rotom stays behind to work at the Either Foundation, kind of wrapping up the use of that Pokemon as well. So all in all, it does seem like, despite the fact there's been a lot of different Pokemon that have come in and out of Ash's team, he still has managed to release a big handful of his Pokemon. Though definitely not as frequently as he may be used to, it's still interesting every time we see a departure of 
a Pokemon that's been very iconic in Ash's team for such a long time. Which Pokemon was the most shocking or disappointing for you the first time you watched it? We still feel like Bye Bye Butterfree stings to this day, or maybe how Pidgeot was done kind of dirty at the end of it all still there waiting for Ash to one day return and Ash probably forgot he even had one. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Also be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. That is it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.